So hello, welcome to Wildwood, and welcome to our wolf talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about wolves here at Wildwood, so let me introduce them. We currently have six wolves here at Wildwood, and they are a true family. We have mum and dad, their names are Odin and Nuna, and we have their four sons, Maximus, Minimus, Augustus and Tiberius. Obviously, Mum and Dad are the oldest of the family. Uh, they were born in 2015. The boys were born here at Wildwood in 2018, and they're just coming up to their second birthday. Believe it or not, they were born in May of 2018, and by August, they'd all really reached full size. They do have slightly different markings, and their keepers can tell them apart. Unfortunately, I'm not good enough at recognising them to be able to tell who's who. These are grey wolves. Grey wolves are the largest members of the dog and fox family. They're not the tallest. The tallest are the maned wolves who live down in South America, but they're very long-legged. The overall size and weight is the grey wolves that are the biggest of the family. You find them pretty much all the way around the Arctic Circle, so in North America, in Northern Europe, and in Russia. And you find types, subspecies, all the way down into Arabia, Tibet, and even India. They are incredibly wide ranging. The ones that we have here are the standard European grey wolves. And if you're wondering why we have them here at Wildwood, we did used to have wolves in Britain, up until about Tudor times. Sadly, they were seen as a threat and a pest, and they were deliberately hunted to extinction. We believe that the last wolf in Britain, and I'm being very careful there, not Ireland, Britain, died in about 1740. One of the reasons that wolves were seen as being dangerous or a threat was, of course, that they would hunt livestock, things like sheep and goats. The truth is, the wolves are natural predators. In the wild, they'll take anything from small mammals and rabbits, right the way up to deer and even bison. The key is that they work as a team. Now, wolves can run quite fast. They have long legs and they're very good at endurance running. And they run at speeds of up to 28 miles an hour. That's about as fast as Usain Bolt. However, things like bison and deer can run a lot faster. The solution is you do a relay race. One wolf starts the hunt, starts the chase. But as that wolf starts to get tired, it falls back. Another wolf takes over. And so on and so on. This way, the deer, or what other animal they're hunting, gets tired. And finally, when it's worn down, everyone can pile in and bring the animal down. We do sometimes get asked, do we feed our wolves live animals? The answer is no. For one reason, it's against the law. For another reason, it would be too cruel to the animal itself. They do get fed. They do get fed proper meat. And they're usually fed about every two to three days. This is exactly like in the wild. You wouldn't make a kill with every hunt. As for what our wolves eat, well, it's mainly things like sheep, beef, rabbit, and chicken. Though I have to say, Nuna, the mother, doesn't actually like eating chicken and tends to leave it. They have been tried with fish in the past. Uh, although they like it, they don't tend to eat it. Instead, they roll in it to get the smell. If you're wondering why they like rolling fish, it's to do with their sense of smell. Just like a pet dog, wolves have a fantastic sense of smell. It's at least 50 times better than ours. It's one of the main ways that they can track prey, or they, they can know what's in the area. They can pick up on the scents of other members of their family. In addition, they've got very good eyesight. When you look at a wolf's face, both its eyes are facing forward, that allows it to judge distances very, very well. 
but probably its best sense is its sense of hearing. Owls probably have the sharpest hearing of any animal at Wildwood. Over flat ground, one wolf can hear another howling from about 10 miles away. We do get asked, do our wolves howl? Well, the answer is yes, they do, but they don't tend to do it during the day. They have a habit of doing it at about three o'clock in the morning. And we know this thanks to our neighbors reporting that they hear, heard the wolves howling. There are a couple of different reasons for howling. Partly it's to proclaim territory, stating this is our patch, this is where we live. But it's also to do with social bonds. As I mentioned earlier, wolves work as a team. When you hear about a pack of wolves, you're actually hearing about a wolf family. And they'll have a particular order in that family. In our case, Odin and Nuna are the alphas. They're the leaders of the family, mum and dad. The sons, they have a strict order of who's more important than who. Minimus is the, uh, the bottom of the order. He's usually quite a nervous, fidgety wolf, and sometimes you'll see him walking around by himself with his tail tucked between his legs. When they howl, everyone will take turns. But when you howl, and how long you howl for, depends on your status in the pack. So Odin and Nuna will start the howl. They'll howl the longest. And it'll go through the group right down to Minimus. And he'll howl the shortest and always last. As I mentioned earlier, wolves used to live in Britain. And some people have been asking whether or not they could be brought back and reintroduced. There are good reasons for doing that. We have no big predators in Britain today. Most people would think that's a really good thing. Unfortunately, it means that numbers of animals like deer and rabbits can get to very, very high levels. There's nothing controlling the numbers. Bringing back a natural predator would actually put things more into balance. But is it likely to be the wolf? The answer is almost certainly not. Wolves are seen as being dangerous and if you think of almost any fairy tale, wolves tend to be the bad guys. It's not fair, but it's the way people think. Also, wolves tend to need a lot of space. Each pack will need a lot of space. And um, if you gave a wolf a choice between going after uh, a nice juicy sheep or a great big deer with huge antlers that might actually hurt it, it'll go for the sheep every time. There have been some discussions about whether or not they could be brought back to Scotland, to the wild of the Scottish Highlands, but long term it looks like we won't be seeing wolves in the wild in Britain. However, one of the good bits of news is that they have spread back into every country in Europe. As far as wolves are concerned, they don't care about boundaries, borders, and worldwide, grey wolves seem to be doing quite well. So, Although our wolves will definitely know they're going back to the wild, they seem to be very happy and settled. And hopefully in the future, you'll be able to visit us here at Wildwood and see them for yourselves.